So you have food cravings. I can relate. You're eating healthy, your fitness is on point, and your mindset is strong. But every day, you have a craving for some junk food. You give in to that craving and start to binge out on your favorite cheat food. Feeling guilty and mad? We've all been there. But don't get frustrated for having cravings. It's completely natural. After watching this video, you will have a better understanding of why we have food cravings and how to lower them. So put that chocolate bar down and enjoy this video. Apparently, food cravings, which can be defined as the intense desire for a specific food that is uncontrollable, is extremely common. Surveys estimate that almost 100% of young women and nearly 70% of young men had food cravings during the past year. Every person experiences cravings differently, but they are typically transient and often for processed foods that are high in sugar, salt, and unhealthful fats. Several theories exist as to what causes food cravings, but not one theory has been proven scientifically sound. Some common reasons why people believe that they have food cravings include lacking a certain nutrient that the food provides, an imbalance in blood sugar, emotional factors such as depression, boredom, or stress, hormones, especially those that occur during menstruation or pregnancy, and diets that are too restrictive and result in cravings for foods that are not on the diet. There are two types of food cravings. Selective cravings are cravings for specific foods such as a person's favorite cookie, a particular burger from their favorite restaurant, or a bag of potato chips of a certain flavor. Non-selective hunger is the desire to eat anything. It may be the result of real hunger and hunger pangs, but it can also be a sign of thirst. Drinking water may help with intense non-selective cravings. Those few who don't have food cravings might say that cravings are all in our head, but are they? New research suggests that they might be right. Several specific areas of our brain that are responsible for memory, reward, and sensing pleasure are partially to blame for keeping those food cravings coming. Much of the research into cravings has also found that there are probably not one or two, but several causes of food cravings. They include psychological, external triggers, hormones, and emotions. Let's examine each one in greater detail. If you always eat popcorn when you go to the movies, your cravings for popcorn will increase every time you go watch a movie. That's because cravings arise from particular external cues that our brain processes from past experiences, rather than our body calling out for something. People might experience food cravings seemingly out of nowhere or they may be related to seeing, smelling, or hearing about a specific food. For instance, seeing an advertisement for a pan-fried pizza might trigger a craving for it. An imbalance of hormones, such as leptin or serotonin, could also lead to food cravings. Women can experience especially strong cravings during pregnancy due to natural hormonal changes. Emotions can contribute to food cravings, such as in cases of comfort eating, to deal with depression, stress, or even boredom. Cravings that are spurred by emotions are typically for foods containing fat, sugar, or both. Although most people will tell you that they crave carbs, when they list some items that they actually crave, these foods are also high in fat and sugar. Just look at this list, in no particular order, of the food items that people on average crave the most. Do you crave any of those things? I know I do. Okay, so now that we know what causes food cravings and the fact that we all have them, the million dollar question is how to limit them. Here are six effective steps to lowering those pesky cravings. Number one, out of sight is usually not out of mind. Dietary restrictions definitely make cravings worse. Does this mean it's best to give in to food cravings? That depends on your level of control. If you're like me and are able to satisfy a chocolate craving with a few chocolate kisses, then go for it. But if you're someone whose cravings get out of control, that is, you end up eating a half a gallon of ice cream, it gets more complicated. If this describes you, your best bet is to have only portion controlled amounts of your desired food in your house. Number two, make lower calorie choices. Since most of us will likely give in to our temptation and eat what we crave, 
make sure to have lower calorie alternatives around the house. This can include fruit to satisfy those sweet cravings or pretzels to satisfy those salty and crunchy cravings. You can also bake low sugar and low fat desserts and have them handy for when that uncontrollable food thought creeps into your head. Be on the lookout for my Blondie Squares recipe in the near future. Number three, be aware of your environment. Have you noticed that everywhere you look, our environment seems to be screaming at us to eat more junk food? Unhealthy food is highly accessible, convenient, engineered to taste good, and is heavily promoted. Now I know it's hard to look away when those tantalizing commercials come on, but walk away from the TV or stop staring at the billboard to change your environment and avoid the temptation. Number four, don't allow yourself to get too hungry. Do you find yourself skipping a meal or not eating when you're truly hungry? Not a good idea. Why? Because eventually you get so hungry that you get hangry and end up overeating to compensate. It is in this state of extreme hunger that we tend to crave quick fix foods which have very little nutritional value. Number five, drink lots of water. The part of your brain that controls the thirst sensation is called the hypothalamus. Guess what else the hypothalamus controls? That's right, hunger. When you're dehydrated, the hypothalamus kicks in and triggers thirst. This can also trigger the food cravings. Drinking enough water is one of the easiest ways to keep cravings in check. Doing so also cuts down on your desire for other, less healthy beverages. Downing a cold glass of water is one of the first things you should do when a sugar craving strikes. And last but not least, number six, take good care of yourself. Most of us could use a good dose of nurturing. If we take good care of ourselves each day, we may be less likely to feel stressed, angry, or unhappy. And guess what? When we feel great, we are less likely to crave comfort foods and develop cravings. Activities to nurture yourself. Go for a hike or a stroll in your neighborhood with your dog. Go to the park with your friend and kick a soccer ball around. Challenge yourself in a 20-minute meditation session. Or try something new, like learning how to play an instrument or riding a motorized bowl. Anything that will take your mind away from food. Oh, you know what else you can do? You can like this video to let me know that you enjoy the content. And subscribe to my channel to be entertained by me, the Motorized Bull Rider.